Jordan from Fit Grind, and today we're going over four tips to help you with the Murph workout. And if you stay until the end, I'm gonna give you a bonus tip to make that five tips for your most successful Murph attempt yet. Um, we are having a summer sale at fitgrindapparel.com this weekend. We're only, only 20% off. I'll leave the link in the description, full men's and women's line. You get 20% off if you click the link in the description and that discount code will be on there. So before we get started with the video, the first thing you need you guys to do is make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. That will make sure that you don't miss out on other videos like this. I've done a workout tutorial and a kind of strategy approach to the acid bath workout. So if you want to check that out, I will leave the link in the description. So make sure that you like and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss other videos like this. The first tip that I have for you guys is to know your goal. You might have a specific time frame that you want to get this workout done in. And I promise you, if, if you break it down into what is your goal and then you break it down into what do I need to get each section done and this workout in, you're gonna have a lot more success than if you just go out as hard as you possibly can, just go as fast as you can, because in this workout, eventually you will hit a wall going with that strategy. So, for example, let's say that you wanna get the workout done in under 40 minutes. That's a goal for a lot of people for Murph. What you need to do is you need to take each section and you need to realize, okay, I need to get this mile done in this amount of time. I need to get this 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, 300 squats done in this amount of time. I need to get the last mile done in this amount of time. So, for example, let's take this 40 minute time frame. You're trying to get the Murph done in under 40 minutes. So what you need to do for that, this is one way that this could look, you need to pace your first mile in eight minutes. And if you're getting an eight minute first mile, you need to get your five, 10, 15, 20 rounds done in 24 minutes or less. That would keep you on pace with that 32 minute range and then you have eight minutes left on your last mile. Now, that's one example of what a 40 minute Murph can look like. More than likely, your first mile is gonna be faster than your last mile, so just know that going into it. But like I said, my first tip is make sure that you have a goal and then break it down into sub goals of that so that you can kind of set yourself up for pacing and I'll kind of talk about this in a little bit too as well um, and some other, some other tips that I have. But don't just go into this workout, just go in everything that you got and go in as hard as you can because eventually you're gonna hit a wall. So that's tip number one. My second tip builds off of that first tip that I had, and it's all about pacing. First kind of sub tip on this tip number two that I would give you is pace your first mile. So you're not gonna wanna go out and sprint this first mile. You wanna make sure that you realize that this is not a sprint workout. This is a workout that um, you're just gonna chip away at. So pace yourself a little bit on that first mile knowing that you have a lot of work and a lot of volume to do in that 100, 200, 300, and that last mile. The second tip um, with this, this pacing is make sure that you're, you know how to pace your 100, 200, 300. So one strategy that works really well, and I was talking about, if you're trying to stay with that same example, you're trying to get work done in under 40 minutes, and you need to get to that um, five, 10, 15, 20 rounds done in 24 minutes, assuming that you're gonna get an eight minute mile at the beginning and eight minute mile at the end. In order to do this, what's gonna help is, you can come in to that first round, first five rounds, and you, you can rip through five, 10, 15 really quick, and you're gonna feel great. But the problem is you're gonna hit a wall eventually going for a really fast pace. So, a better way to treat this is to treat it as almost like an EMOM style. That's gonna allow you to still get it done in that under 24 minute range, but it's gonna allow you to have consistent efforts and repeatable efforts, giving you just little micro rests and from there, you're gonna be able to get through those 20 rounds a lot more efficiently than just going out and going balls to the wall. So what that could look like is, say you're trying to go every minute on the minute, that would put you right around 20 minutes for your five, 10, 15, 20 rounds. You would try and complete your five pull-ups, your 10 push-ups, and your 15 air squats every minute on the minute. Say that takes you 45 or 50 seconds to complete that, you would take 10 seconds of micro rest at the end of the round and then go back to that next round. Just getting those little micro rests is gonna add up instead of just going right back because eventually, just like in tip number one, you're gonna hit a wall. So know your paces, know your goal, and that's gonna help you achieve a better time in life. My third tip that I have for you is know which exercise you're gonna struggle on. So are you gonna struggle on the pull-ups, the push-ups, or the air squats? Typically, most people are gonna struggle on either the pull-ups or the push-ups. So identify which one you're gonna struggle with, and then from there, what you're gonna do is you're gonna structure your rest time right before that exercise. So say for example that you are gonna struggle with your pull-ups. 
You're gonna treat it just like that EMOM style, like I said, number two, you're gonna start off with a round, you're gonna do five pull-ups, you're gonna do 10 push-ups, you're gonna do 15 air squats, and then you're gonna take your micro rest that you have. So say that took you 45 seconds to complete five, 10, 15. You would take that rest right before the pull-ups. Or say that your push-ups are something that you're gonna struggle with. There's another tip that I'm gonna tell you in tip number four, but another tip that you can do is take your rest right before the push-ups. So you would go your five, 10, 15, back to your five pull-ups, and then you would take your micro rest right before your push-ups. Just identifying which exercise you're gonna struggle with, and then you take your micro rest right before that is gonna make sure that you're in this workout the most fresh, um, but it's just gonna give you enough time to bang out those reps and get through consistent rounds where you're not having these really long rounds that are kind of outliers that really start to, to, to bring that time up. All right, my tip number four is building on all these tips. And like I said, figure out which one in tip number three that you're gonna struggle with. My tip number four is what do you do when you start to struggle with that? Or what do you do when you get through the workout and there's an exercise where you're starting to hit muscle failure on? So let's say for example, you're doing your five, 10, 15, your five pull-ups, your 10 push-ups, your 15 squats. You've got through 10 rounds, it's going really good. And then say in the 11th round, you're doing your push-ups and they're really starting to almost reach muscle failure. What you can do in that, that um, scenario is, say you're, you're getting through your five pull-ups just fine, your 10 push-ups are getting really tough and it's almost muscle failure at the end or you are hitting muscle failure and you can't get all 10 in a row, you wanna keep moving in this workout. You don't really wanna rest very often. The beauty of the way that this workout is structured is with your five pull-ups you have an upper body pull. With your five push-ups, or sorry, your 10 push-ups you have an upper body push and with your 15 air squats, you have a lower body push. So while one exercise, you're, you're working certain muscle groups, on the others, those muscle groups are getting rested. So while you're doing your pull-ups, you're pushing muscles and your legs are resting. So the beauty of this is that, say that your push-ups are starting to struggle and you're hitting muscle failure. What you could do is you could do your five pull-ups, you go to the ground and hit your five push-ups, back up 15 air squats, and then while you're doing your air squats, your push-up muscles are resting, you go back down to the ground and you, you do your five push-ups. What this allows you to do is it allows you to keep chipping away at that workout without ever really resting and just sitting there. Um, and it avoids that muscle failure that again will really start to fatigue you out. All right, here's my fifth tip and this is my bonus tip. And this kind of goes into the mindset. And my fifth tip is remember why we do this workout. This is a workout that is all about sacrifice. It's to celebrate the service of the people in the military that serve for this country. Um, and to really celebrate the sacrifice of Lieutenant Daniel Murphy. So remember that, and when you're starting to fatigue and you're starting to get tired, you need to remember that this is a workout of sacrifice. This is not a workout that's going to be easy. So before you are going to come for the Murph workout, before you're gonna do the, work, the Murph workout, what you need to do is you need to, one, have a goal like we talked about, but you also need to figure out why it is that you are doing this workout. Maybe you need to have some sort of mantra. Maybe your goal is to get through all of your rounds in a certain time frame, or your goal is to get through all of a certain amount of reps in an unbroken fashion, or maybe you need to um, think of the sacrifice within the workout. Just remember why you're doing this workouts and tap into that when you get tired, because there will be a point in the workout where fatigue starts to set in. You're gonna ask yourself, why am I doing this workout? Remember that, it's a workout of sacrifice. Tap into your mantra that you may have before the workout, and remember that pain is temporary, it won't last forever, you can finish the workout and then you got the rest of the day to rest. So these have been my five tips. I made another video on the acid bath challenge workout. If you guys have ever done that workout, it is a four time 500 meter ski, 500 meter row, 1000 meter bike. Um, so go check that workout. I'll leave the link in the description if you want to see. I did two attempts at it. I also talked about the strategy with it. So like I said, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss more videos like this. Um, and I will catch you guys in the next one.